So now in the last one. Uh, so we we have seen the concept of uh, the equilateral distance and from the equilateral distance, how we could formulate uh, a theory for um, like a positive definite matrix. Okay, that we have seen. Suppose in the uh, the formula of the equilateral distance is d x comma y, y x and y is a vector. Then the square root of um, x i minus y r whole square that we have seen. So this distance can be represented in the form of a matrix. Suppose if you take only two elements, suppose v uh, one a two and the v one v two, then this uh, you simply have the d square. Then if you do the d square, then the square root will be removed. Okay, then you simply have this summation of uh, x i minus y r whole square. Now the summation of x i minus y r whole square can be represented by simply x one minus y one comma x two minus y two. It is a row vector. Then x i minus y one into x two minus y two. This is a column vector. Okay. Now if you just do it, uh, multiply with with a uh, matrix so uh, this is called a square matrix 1 0 0 1 uh, <coughs> it is called the identity ma matrix so means if you uh, just you just check it that uh, the value that you are going to have suppose uh, if you have a1 a2 uh, then 1 0 0 1 1 or if you just simply take two components a1 comma a2 then 1 0 0 1 then a1 a2 Then you are you will simply have y one square plus y two square is equal to zero. You can check it. If y one square plus y two square is equal to zero, then y one is equal to zero and y two is equal to zero. It means that anything if uh, if you multiply identity matrix with anything, uh, then it it will not affect on your results. Okay. Now if you have y one square plus y two square is equal to zero, then at at what values of y one and y two, uh, this whole sum will be zero. So obviously, uh, if sum of the term is zero. Then the every term is zero, so that is the formula that you know. So now this one zero zero one can be represented by the weight matrix. So now, as I already told, taken at if you have this weighted equilateral distance, then in the summation of x i minus y y, so you, you can write w i, so it is an weight into x i minus y whole square. That that we have already seen. So now this matrix is called a positive definite matrix. Okay, <coughs> if for every non-zero vector. A, okay, so we have already seen the uh, concept of the non-zero non vector because uh, a real matrix uh, A in comma n, so it is a square matrix. Is said to be a positive definite if for every non-zero vector A, uh, A transpose A A greater than zero. Now, if all the elements are zero, then it is called the zero vector. If at least one of the element is not zero, then it is called the non-zero vector. That we have already seen. Okay. Now today we will see the basic concept of the statistics. Uh, that let uh, <coughs> x1, x2, x3 all are the points in the real space. Okay, all are the points in the real space R. Now the mean of x, which which is denoted by the underline x underline, uh, or I mean the mean of x actually it is a vector. Okay, so the mean of x whenever underline is there, x so it is a Vector. Vector means it has got n components in the n-dimensional, or you can say the real space. Simply in the real space, you have the n points. Now, if you write x bar, then it is called. Yeah, you can write simply one by n. So you know, I know uh, that uh, all of you know this uh, formula. X bar is equal to one by n is equal to one to n x i. So now you you may be interested to know from where it is coming. Suppose I am just explaining to you, so you can do it by yourself. Just a hint: <coughs> Let x1, x2, xn uh, be are the points in the real space. Now let you can have f a is equal to f a is a function of uh, uh, I mean it is a function, so you can represent if a function in this way uh, such that. Uh, this things has to be optimized. Like i is equal to one to n x i minus a square. Now we are going to devise, uh, develop a function. Uh, uh, what is the function? Function of a 
and we are trying to extract this value of the function from each data points and then you have to do this is square root you are simply have the distances okay that is uh, now here the uh, uh, this is a summation term we have it is this square root is not there you are just going to have these distances like this i is equal to 1 to n xi minus a whole square for all a which is in the real space now actually this this formula that we are going to have i mean uh, uh, to establish this from where this uh, this means what is the theory behind mean now the mean fa it needs to be calculated now how do you calculate this mean minimum uh, minimum value of fa you need to do the differentiations okay in the class 12 or, or class 11 you have seen this how to find the how to find the maximum or minimum of a function you need to do the differentiation first order derivative and the second order de derivative okay now if, if you see this you, you need to compute mean mean fa that needs to be computed but what values of a this function is going to be minimized now if you simply have uh, this f dash a now if you do the f dash a then uh, that uh, what you are going to get minus 2 summation of i is equal to 1 to a xi minus a is equal to 0 if you do the differentiation with respect to a because you need to find that what values of a this function f is equal to i is equal to 1 to a xi minus a whole square will be optimized or the minimized now now uh, f dash a is equal to 0 so according to the our differentiation first you take first order derivative and equate to 0 now if you do these things now what you are going to get i is equal to 1 to n xi minus a is equal to 0 which implies that summation of i is equal to 1 to n xi minus i is equal to 1 to n a means you have n times a that is equal to 0 it means you are going to have xi minus n a okay if a is a constant then 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus is equal to this is the n times of a then minus n a is equal to 0. Now uh, the, if you just shift uh, this n a into the right hand side you will have n a is equal to x i now a is equal to 1 by n i is equal to 1 by n x i that is simply nothing but a x bar ok. So this way that this function is coming. So uh, that we are doing that mean f a occurs when a is equal to x i now if you put a is equal to x i in the formula then you are simply going to get the variance if you just put the at what values of a this function is optimized or the function is minimized at x is equal to a is equal to x bar now you put x bar into the equations now in the earlier equation it was f a now you replace a with x bar then if, if x bar is equal to i is equal to 1 to n uh, x i minus x bar holds. It means that mean f a occurs when a is equal to x bar and then f x bar is equal to i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar holds. So it is called the variance in the data set. Okay. So now instead of taking, so you can ask me, sir, uh, why, why, why I am taking this square root? Because square, square I am taking uh, because if any error is there, uh, is, is, is over if, if any negative term is there uh, if you uh, whenever you are going to do the difference so in, in the difference of negative term you you may get now if you have the square then the negative will be positive so that is why i am going to take this square you may ask me sir uh, uh, why don't don't we take the modulus so if you also take the modulus if you take the modulus also then the then you can create only the absolute value i mean the negative will be removed out but if you take the modulus instead of taking the xi minus a whole square you could have taken xi minus a mod but you need to do the again you need to follow the same procedure to optimize this but if you take the modulus so now modulus is not differentiable at every point when you take this square okay so now modulus is not differentiable at every point so that's why we take this square so that is the point so so that is why we are not considering the modulus so that's why you are considering the square because this these things we can you can differentiate at every point so that is the aim that that we we had not taken modulus uh where we have developed the functions we have taken this square okay now the now these things uh this this variance you can have if you have set of uh, i mean uh few uh, if you have n points in r in, in in the real space then you can have the variance is equal to one by n as equal to 
1 to n xi minus x, xi minus x bar in full square. So now uh, this is the concepts that, that you can have. Uh, then ne next thing is, if you see these things, so one example is there. Now uh, you, you can check if you take the modulus, in, instead of taking the square, if you take the modulus, then what you are going to get? Let uh, x1, x2, xn, and let you have another function ga, uh, that is, so earlier it was a function fa, where xi minus a whole square. Now you are going to take the ga. To, to take the same difference but with the modulus i minus equal to 1 to n xi minus a. Now if we take modulus then what will be the scenario? Now mean g a is obtained okay uh, then you will have to take the minimum of g a if a is the median of the data sets. Suppose we are going to take some values 1, 2, 3 and 10. Now what will be the mean? So mean is 4. Now, if you just find out the values, actually we are going to check if you take the mean and if you take the median, so your result will be different. Okay. Now, if you take the mean, then you uh, if you take the mean 4, now you put the value of G4, that is in, in the Xi minus A, then what you are going to get? 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 6, that is 12. So now, if you take the median, now median will be either 2, because as you have the event terms, so now median, uh, if n is odd, then the median is exactly the mid, midpoint of them. Here the n is the head. Then it is between n and n plus 1. So, so that's why you are going to take 2 and 3 or you, or you could have taken 2 plus 3 plus 2 that is 2.5. So both the things will give you to the same result. You, you, you can check it. So here you, you could say that if you take this 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 by 5, so that is a 2.5. So it, it is not the member of the data set. So median is not to be the member of the data set. Now the median need not to be unique. So median need not to be unique. So median is the point in the data set which gives at least minimum value of GA of the data point. So that is why so you, you can have the difference. If you are taking mean, and if you take the median, then this scenario will be different. Okay, so 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 that is why. So you can analyze that median cannot be that uh, is not the member of the data set. So it, it need not to be a unique because if you n is even, then you you, uh, you have two median. If you n is odd, you have only one median. Okay, and you, you just take the uh, difference. Okay. Next is this probability. Now you, you know the, all of you know this probability concepts. So now let uh, a random variable yes, x. Sir. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, in our lab assignment, you asked to compute the mean error, uh, right? Uh, for every classification. Yes. Uh, uh, in that, uh, let's say we have a uh, so, uh, for any data set. I mean, uh, for Euclidean distance, we have calculate. Uh, sir, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so uh, uh, for a particular mean, uh, we have uh, we have calculated the uh, uh, centroid for any uh, data set, uh, and for uh, to test that the mean error, uh, uh, first of all we have to uh, uh, mean for particular uh, row by row, or I don't mean the uh, I don't know what is the mean error in this uh, uh, classification thing. So the. These things will be discussed in the lab class, okay? Not now. Okay. 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 So I'll be all be discussing in the detail in the lab class. Okay, so now it isn't. You can ask me related to these things. Okay. Okay, sir. I'll, I'll just get back to you after these lectures. Okay, so let me just complete this lecture. Okay, because uh, I need to complete a lot of things. Okay. Then uh, okay. just after completing the lecture, you can ask me. Okay. So now here are the concept of the probability. Now uh, let. Uh, uh, a random variable x, uh, like uh, it has got its values, like x1, x2, x3, with the probability p1, p2, p3, then the mean of the random variable which is denoted by e of x, means expectation of x, that is i is equal to 1 to infinity xi into pi. So it is the value with this probability. So suppose uh, if I take the our example, so what is the average salary of a person in any any state? 
Okay. Now, uh, if you just have these samples or the observations, like the January, February, May, March, you have uh, that the persons has got uh, 100 rupees per month, then April, May, June, July, 200 rupees per month, August, September, October, December, 300 rupees. Then X1 is equal to 100, X2 is equal to 200, X3 is equal to 300. Now P1 can be computed 3 by 12, P2 will be 4 by 12, P3 is equal to 5 by 12. Now the what is the average salary? I is equal to 1 to 3, Xi into PI. So these are the way that you can compute. This is an expected value. Okay. So now here in the probability, so you cannot, you need to always compute this expected value of a random variable. <coughs> okay. So based on these whatever events that you are going to get or whatever observation that you are going to capture. Next is that suppose a coin is tossed 10 times. Okay. Uh, X, X denotes the number of heads. So now uh, the probability of getting head is P of H is equal to P and probability of getting head tail is 1 minus P. That you know already. Now, uh, what is the probability of getting head three times? That is that you need to follow the binomial distribution. That all of you know that binomial distribution uh, that uh, you can simply have Px is equal to or the formula is that if Px is equal to R Okay, uh, is NCR, there is a 10 CR, then P to the power R into 1 minus P to the power 10 minus R. That's, we are just simply right. The P is equal to X is equal to R, where X is equal to 3. Uh, what is the probability of getting X 3 times? That is a 10 CR, because 10 times you are going to, uh, I mean, a coin is being tossed 10 times, so 10 C 3, then P to the power R means P to the power 3, uh, and then 1 minus P to the power 10 minus. I mean n minus r, okay, uh, where its range is uh, 0 to 10. Now, uh, in the binomial distribution, so where r is an integer, okay. So now, uh, in this way, uh, that you can have. Now, uh, power set means, so here, here, actually, why I am discussing all these things? Because uh, uh, whenever I am discussing the base decisions rule, so in the base decisions rule, there is a concept which is called the density function. I mean, these density functions for normal distribution. Then you can have density function for binomial distributions, density functions for Poisson distribution, density function for Z distribution. Okay, then this T, T, uh, T distribution, all the distribution. Then you need to know this formula or do plug in it to get the answer. Now, uh, this power set can be defined. Set of all subsets is called a power set. Then uh, you can simply have that uh, p x is equal to r, uh, e to the power minus it is called it is just simply formula of the Poisson distribution uh, that uh, you can get it uh, that uh, uh, p uh, p is equal to uh, p x is equal to r is equal to e to the power minus lambda into lambda square by r where r is equal to 1 to 3 where the in the Poisson distribution lambda is greater than is equal to 0 where x is equal to 1 to uh, till infinity, it is uncountable. Okay, it must be a countable set. So now, next is very very important concept is called the covariance. Okay, uh, you know the concept of the mean. You, you you have known the concept of the variance. Now next is called the covariance. So because to understand this covariance, uh, that Suppose you have two variables. Covariance means you have two variables. Suppose I have, I mean, uh, I'm just explaining to you. I'm just uh, making you understand by taking the two variables. Okay. Suppose I have two variables, capital X, capital Y. Capital X denotes the height. Capital Y denotes the weight. Okay. Now in the capital X, you have set of heights or you have set of samples or you have set of observation small x1 capital x is a vector capital y is also a vector because it is a feature and these each features will have some values x1 x2 x3 till xn you have n components of x1 then capital y will have the n components as we can see that we, uh, that we have plotted okay x and y so now <coughs> what do you have to do 
that uh, you need to find you need to find the relationship between the two variables you need to find the relationship of x and y on the basis of the sample points now what you have to do you have to estimate the mean of the population on the basis of mean of the sample actually what we are going to have in statistics you have to have the population mean you have to estimate the mean of the population on the basis of the mean of the sample okay so that you have to do it now here the sample points by xi comma yy you just simply take xi is are all are all the values of the height of a person and this are uh, the wi is a weight okay so now xi comma y now you are trying to uh, find the relationship between xi comma yy so now in order to do this thing so i have just plotted uh, three different plots i am just so we are just plotting three different plots you may have the other plot plots plots also i am not telling you that this is the only plots so i have some data points x xi to xn and yi to yn i am just simply plotting so first case case 1 second case case 2 third one is case case 3 as, as you can see uh, that in the in the, in the quadrant uh, x comma y if you see this thing if you see the plots that uh, when x is increasing y is, is y is also increasing in the case number 1 if you just look at the plot if you forget about now x dash and y dash x dash and y dash i'll come later you first see that you have some data points in xy plane okay and if you just see the plot when x is increasing y is also increasing it means that so there is a relationship of x and y okay and this relationship is a positive relationship so now you are trying to find a relationship and so this uh, this uh, this relationship is a positive relationship because when x is increasing y is also increasing as you can check it okay more or less okay when x is increasing y is also increasing in the first relationship now you are going to trying to find a relationship with a quantity you are trying to find a relationship between two the two variables with a quantity and this quantity that you need to find out what is this quantity your objective is to find this quantity okay and this by seeing the plot i am telling that this relationship between x and y is a positive relationship as x is increasing y is also increasing similarly for case 2 that I, it is just a uh, pictorial representation that hemisphically that we, we have plotted case 2 as you can see when x is increasing y is decreasing so this relationship is called a negative relationship i mean so there there is a relationship between x and y and uh, so now in order to demonstrate or in order to find the relationship you need to have a quantity and this quantity is a negative quantity okay i mean uh, it's not a negative quantity i mean this quantity that you need to find out and the relationship is a negative relationship so that that's why r is less than 0 in the first case r is greater than 0 i mean relationship is greater than 0 case number 3 as you can see when x is also increasing i mean y is i mean this i mean there is a no change of x and y values okay it means that so now uh, i mean uh, if x values are y values are more or less equal so now the relationships are almost equal relationships so that's why it is called r is zero it is almost equal relationship so r is equal to zero now in the first case now uh, po positive relationship that you have exist now now next jobs okay now in the next jobs what i am going to do so i am just find the mean of all the x values i am taking the case number 1 theek okay? hai as you can see that uh, i have uh, in the plot so so there is a yellow circle is there where the data points is there theek okay? hai now what is this yellow circle uh, pointing to now whatever x values are there i am just taking all the x values and take the mean okay next is 
I have all the y values, y1 to yn, then I have taken all the mean. Now this point is called the mean of all the x values and mean of all the y values, simply. Okay, you have mean of all these x values. So it is the this point is x bar comma y bar simply because it is mean of x bar is equal to 1 by n x i to uh, uh, i is equal to 1 to n x i and y bar is equal to 1 by n i is equal to 1 to n summation of uh, summation of i is equal to 1 to n y n. So this point which is encircled by the yellow so it is just a mean of the, this value so now i am just going to change the axis so in your earlier axis uh, it was this mean was 0 0 now from the 0 0 mean that i mean i'm just i'm just going to change the origin so initially your origin was 0 0 now i'm going to change shift the origin from 0 0 to x bar comma y bar so which is encircled by yellow now in the x bar comma x bar comma y bar it is my new origin. Now you are going to have the new axis. Now your axis is going to be shifted. Okay. So now your axis is going to be shifted to x, x dash and the y dash. Okay. Now in the new axis, uh, that the points that you are going to have uh, means what points that in the first quadrant in the new axis you have first quadrant, in the second quadrant, in the third quadrant, and you have the fourth quadrant. In the new axis you have. As you can see that you have first quadrant, in the first quadrant you have some data points, in the second quadrant you have some data points, third quadrant you have some data points, fourth quadrant you have some data points. So now you take any value, uh, you, you take any value that means uh, what is the value, what is the distance of the values from the origin, I mean uh, from this uh, origin, matlab x, x, comma, x bar, comma, y bar, you can simply have the perpendicular distance from 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 uh, any point to the x-axis and any point to the y-axis that you can have. Okay. Now you just take the mu multiplication of new x values and new y values positions. Okay. If you take the multiplications of new x values and the new y values in the new quadrant, then what you are going to get? The in the first quadrant that uh, these you have more positive samples because in the first quadrant you have uh, positive examples and you have negative examples uh, sorry uh, you have positive uh, x values you have positive y values now if you just multiply them then the relations is also a positive similarly in the third quadrant you have negative x values you have negative y values but if you just multiply them you have the positive values Okay, now as you can see in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant, you have more positive samples than this second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Because in the second quadrant, you have negative sample, positive sample, if you just multiply it, now you will have this, this, this value of the samples is less. And also in the fourth quadrant, if you have positive sample and the negative sample, Okay, now what is the value, actual values? These actual values of these things, you will have xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar. That is the things, now. If you take any points, then for, if you take the, any points, and if you take the distance, x points distance and the y point distance, x point distance, you will have xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar. Okay, now if you just multiply them, then you, you have the positive samples, you have more positive samples in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. And if you have less negative samples in second quadrant and fourth quadrant, it means that the, the positive samples dominates the negative samples. So that's why this relationship is called a positive relationship. Similarly, in the case two, S2, you have calculated the mean and shift the axis. And in this plot, you can see that the negative relationship exists. Why? Because more negative samples are dominating the less positive samples. As we can see in the case number two, in the first quadrant, in the second quadrant, 
this uh, you uh, that uh, if you take the multiplication of the x x uh, x coordinate and the y coordinate now you, you will have the less positive samples and in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant you have the this uh, uh, sir, large why are, why are we multiplying in this case because you are going to have this co co covariance matrix a eh, sorry so you are trying to find this covariance total number of samples because i am trying to find out this covariance so covariance meet you have this two variables x and y so that's why the multiplication is coming okay sir okay because okay. you need to find that uh, x values and one this y values now total number of values that you are going to find now for the total number of values that you need to multiply it okay so that is why i am going to multiply it actually using this vectorial representation i am demonstrating you how the covariance is coming variance you know now from the concept of the variance means how the covariance means co means you have the two variables so here actually i am going to have the only two variables but you may have n variables now what whenever you have the n variables then what will be the scenario okay so if you understood the concept of the two variables then you can easily understood the concept of the n variables because here each variable is a feature each variable is a feature in real space so are you understanding this case too that as we can see in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant the more negative samples are there because their product is negative okay so their product is their their product is negative and you have this and their their product is negative and their value is also large not only the product and their value is also large in the first in the first case as we can see the more more positive samples are dominate are dominating the negative samples so you have the large positive sample as well as their value is also large similarly in the case 2 also you have the more negative sample and their value is also large so that, so that, so that's why uh, you have the negative relationship in case 2 but in case 3 as we can see here all the samples are equally distributed around the mean here all the samples are equally distributed around the mean x bar comma y bar so this is called this case 1 case 2 and this case 3 now using this case 1 and case 2 and case 3 you can establish a formula that covariance of or simply we can write in many books you can write cov 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 x comma y capital x comma capital y is defined by capital now this covariance x comma y is defined as 1 by n so it is simply written cov x comma y is equal to 1 by n I is equal to one to n x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar. Now this x i minus x bar it is a new x coordinate, a new x coordinate, and y i minus y i it is a new y coord coordinate. Now if you just multiply them, then you will get this co covariance. So the multiplication will give it to you the straight answer of the covariance. Okay, you have this. Uh, origin, the, or, or, the origin has to be shifted from zero zero to x bar comma y bar uh, means y bar. Then here you need to have the distances from the x coordinate. Uh, this is an x axis, and what is the distance of the new data points in the x axis, and what is the distance of the uh, new data points of the from the y axis? So that's the, that is the formula. New x coordinate means this is a distance of a point from new x axis. Now the distance of a point from a new y-axis. So that is the thing. X i minus x bar into y i minus y bar. Okay. It 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 may be greater than zero, less than zero, and this is an equal to zero. So now this from the this concept you can have. So this formula it is only for the two variables. Now suppose if you have the n variables, it is for the two variables. Now you have in the real life. You have n variables. Then, how are we going to compute this covariance between uh, among the n variables? Anyone? 
multiply z by minus z power no you have how many pairs co variables means two variables at a time if you have the n variables ha huh? bolo nc2 nc2 very good if you have n variables then how many pairs that you are going to have nc2 now what will be this covariance matrix now if you have the n variables then you will have this different uh, i mean different values of the co uh, covariance now total you will have the covariance matrix the size of the covariance matrix will be n cross n okay and in the in the n cross n matrix you have n, n number of columns rows and n number of columns now in the first one you have cob of x1 comma x1 i'm just representing it in a vector term capital x1 comma capital x1 next cob of x1 comma x2 i'm just going in the horizontally first cob of x1 comma x3 dot 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 cob of x1 comma x3 now in the second row cob of x2 comma x1 cob of x2 comma x2 cob of x x2 comma x3 till cob of x2 comma xn till cob of xn comma x1 cob of xn comma x2 till cob of xn comma xn now if you look at the diagonal elements instead of if you just simply write here in the diagonal element you have cob of x1 comma x1 cob of x2 comma x2 x3 comma xn xn comma xn what is it Co covariance of x comma x that is simply zero variance variance covariance of C yes, cob of x comma x it is simply variance so as you can see the all the diagonal elements are variances so that so that's why it is called this symmetric uh, it is it is a square matrix and as you as you can look at cob of 1 comma 2 in the first row is equal to the in the second row cob of 2 comma 1 so 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 both are same that's why it is called this symmetric that's why it is called the symmetric if you have n variables then you need to compute this covariance matrix where all the diagonal elements are called the variance and you will this matrix is also a symmetric matrix as cob of 1 comma 2 cob of is equal to cob of 2 comma 1 okay so this this is the concept and from the concept you can have the correlation coefficient between two variables so this is a very important concept is called the correlation coefficient so this is will be very useful in many places now this formula for this correlation coefficients between uh, these two variables are x y which is defined by cov x comma y divided by variance of x into variance of y where r x y is range from minus 1 to plus 1 or you can simply write it this way it is simply just a angle between these two vector so now correlation coefficient is simply nothing but it is it is a angle between these two vector what is it x x x1 minus x1 into x2 minus x1 x3 minus x1 into y i minus y1 minus y1 y2 minus y1 y n minus y1 now you simply take the dot product now if you take the dot dot product you will have x1 minus x1 into y1 minus y1 just simply take the dot product then x2 minus x1 into y2 minus y1 then x1 minus x1 into y1 minus y1 so it is simply a cos theta now you know this value of the cos theta okay so now there is a proof so from where it is coming so there is a cosy and squad inequalities is there so all of you so might be knowing that in this uh, in the higher, uh, higher algebra mathematics or matrix algebra there is a cosy squares inequality from this inequality it is coming
Okay, where cos theta lies between minus one to plus one. Okay, and and there is a poop is there. Okay, so now uh, it is bounded in minus one to plus one to reduce the range of minus infinity to plus infinity. Actually, it is a minus infinity to plus infinity, but it is bounded to minus one to plus one. So the the poop is there. You uh, you can follow this in any book. You can go go for it. So these are the very very vital statements that 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 uh, I have written. So it is very very important that covariance matrix is sometimes known as dispersion matrix. Covariance matrix sometimes known as symmetric matrix. Why symmetric? That I explain. Covariance matrix sometimes known as variance covariance matrix. Variance means all the diagonal elements is called the variance. And of diagonal elements are called this covariance. That's why it is called this variance covariance matrix. Now, what is the variance? So, variance is simply the scatter of the data. Okay. Now, this scatter of the data. Now, to understand this scattering, suppose uh, all of you have visited some mela in any village, isn't it? So, कोई कोई मेले में गया हो ना? In any mela, big. Uh, a big mela there is yes. a different stuff yes now if you see in mela uh, in the different shops are there yeah. in the different shops you have seen some uh, large gun is there and uh, and you'll have to just point out using the gun with some dots and some balloons are there in a in a circle uh, in a in a circle was there in, in the circle some balloon was pasted have you noticed it and you are if you if if you just tick the balloon, then you'll 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 get some pride. Hmm? Have you remembered? If you visit any mela and any any big one in in the wall, uh, one large circle is there, and in the large circle some balloons were there, and somebody was given to you on the gun, and and some uh, st some stone was there. Okay, and. Uh, you'll have to put the stone into the gun and you'll have to take it in the right directions. And if you just shoot the uh, balloon, then you'll get some prize. Huh? Have you tried it in Mela? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? So if you just recall this example, now, now suppose you, uh, you have uh, 10, 10, uh, 10 stones. Okay, ten iron stones. Then you just put it into the gun, and you are just going to shoot it. Now, in the first attempt, you are not able to uh, just shoot the balloon. Second attempt, th third attempt. Okay, now you are seeing that whenever all the balloons are because few few person visited it, and some now the balloons are shooted, and uh, this no balloons are there. If you just noticed it, that in this circle, I mean, in the, uh, I mean. Uh, this is a circular ring that some dots are there. Have you, have you just, if you just noticed it, very, very dots are there. So those uh, target is very, very close to the balloon. So it will be very, very nearer to this balloon. Okay, some dots. So if it is a far apart, that, that you will see that uh, that is a, if you are not able to shoot it the balloon correctly, so now the dots will be somewhat very far apart from this balloon. Okay, if you just happen this 10 times and this 20 times. Now, this is called the scattering. So how 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 far? Yeah, if your target is correct, then obviously you're going to achieve it. But if your target is not correct, that somewhat some dispersion is there from the actual target. So now this is called the scatter. Okay, now from this actual mean, so now if it is a mean, you can have the deviations. So from the target, the how much deviation is there? So that that deviation that you can you can capture it in terms of the variances. So that so that is the so that is why you'll have the concept is called the variance is simply the scatter of the data. Okay. So now this is just a very small example so so that you can understand what is the scattering. So often you have used the term is scatter. What is the scattering of the data? It is just a variance is the scatter of the data. So how how I mean, how close that you are, you are particular to a particular target. Okay. Anyway, uh, now the dispersion matrix. Uh, it is sometimes known as as a positive definite matrix. That I have already explained to you. What is the meaning of the positive definite matrix? Okay. And some important properties of the covariance matrix. 
Okay, uh, first of all, I will be also explaining to you uh, the uh, eigenvalues, the eigenvalue function. So now, all eigenvalues or the characteristics root are greater than equal to zero. So you, you know how to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvector from a covariance matrix. Determinant of a minus lambda is equal to zero. A is a formula. Huh? Yes, sir. You have a square matrix, then you have to compute this. A minus lambda i, determinant of a minus lambda is equal to zero. You will have the one characteristic root uh, e equation. And in the characteristic equation, you have the characteristic root and then you can easily compute it. So there, there's a formula is called the Jacobs formula, Jacobs method. So using the Jacobs method, you can compute uh, this, the, the concept of the call this eigenvalue and the eigenvector. So now uh, the properties of covariance matrix is called all eigenvalues are greater than is equal to zero. Eigenvalues simply are the characteristic group. Now the determinant of matrix is simply this product of the eigenvalues. Okay. Now the determinant of the matrix is simply product of eigenvalues is called the determinant of the matrix. Now eigenvalues or eigenvectors can be computed for only square matrix. You, if eigenvalues are not same, then the corresponding eigenvector is orthogonal. Okay, all the eigenvalues uh, strictly greater than zero if it is a positive definite matrix. So you know the meaning of the positive definite matrix. A transpose, small a transpose, capital A, small a is greater than zero, then you will say it is a positive definite matrix where small a is a zero vector. Okay, henceforth the determinant will be strictly positive and greater than zero. If the determinant is semi-positive definite, so what is the semi-positive definite? A transpose capital A small is greater than is equal to zero. So now if the determinant is semi-positive definite, then all the eigenvalues are greater than and equal to zero. Now, uh, if sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the sum of the variance, then the covariance matrix is correct. Suppose, so you will be very interested to, now how do you ensure it that the covariance matrix that you have computed, it is correct or not? So one way to check it that if some of the eigenvalues that you have computed from the covariance matrices, if some of the eigenvalues is equal to the sum of the variance. So what are the what are the variance? Now the sum of the variance uh, is this uh, that is a diagonal element of the covariance matrix. Then you would say that this your covariance matrix is correct. Now you have computed the eigenvalues from the covariance matrix. You just sum them up. You will have one values. Now you have the sum of the variance of the covariance matrix means all the diagonal elements, sum them up. If both the values are same, then you would say that the covariance matrix that you have computed it is correct. Okay, otherwise? Uh, sir, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Are you uh, changing slides? Because it's not... Uh, no, 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 I'm not changing slides. I'm not changing okay, slides. Sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. sorry. Okay, I'm just uh, giving you some comments. Okay, I mean, so that it will be helpful, uh, helpful to you. So whenever it will be implemented. So now, in the Jacobs method, you, you have to implement the Jacobs method to get the eigenvalues. Okay, so the diagonal element is called the eigenvalues. Okay, so there is a book, is called the uh, matrix transformation book is there. There is a uh, Golub's book, G-O-L-U-P-S. So you can also follow the book uh, for uh, to understand the concept. Regressions, I will have the detailed discussions, so I am not going to get discuss it here. So next is called... Uh, very few that I have 10 minutes time. So this is called important concept is called the estimating probability. Have you heard the name estimation? How do, how do you find the probability of an event? So it is called the estimation. Probability, probabilistic estimation. So there is a two types of probabilistic estimation. One is called the unbiased estimation, maximum likelihood estimation. Okay. Now, what do you mean by estimation? Estimation is required to evaluate the procedure is correct or not for doing the experiment. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating, estimation is required to evaluate the procedure is correct or not for doing the experiment. Now, you will have the unbiased estimation. So unbiased estimations mean if average of the value is equal to the original value, then it is called the unbiased estimation. And in the unbiased estimation, you have 
simple random sampling without replacement and you have simple random sampling with replacement so now simple random sampling with replacement is called this independent and identically distributed random variable so oftenly you may come across the term you will come across the term is called the iid random variable it means the independent and identical distribution. What is it? I'll explain to you. Okay. Suppose if you have got finitely many points from a random normal distribution, which is a univariate, multivariate, then the mean of finitely many points is unbiased estimate, maximum likelihood estimate. And consistent estimate of the population mean. I am repeating. If you have got finitely many points from normal distribution, which is to be unvary univariate normal distributions, what is univariate normal distribution? I'll explain. Or it is a multivariate normal distribution. The mean of the mean of finitely many points is unbiased estimate maximum likelihood estimate of the population mean that you need to establish or you need to show now what is simple random sampling with replacement simple example now uh, i have two points uh, you, you have four points one two three four now your actual mean is average is equal to 2.5 now you need to check it that you take how many pairs you take two points at a time one two you take the average one three you, you take the average one four you take the average 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 4, you take the average. Now you take the, uh, all the average, okay? Then the, the your total average is 2.5. Then obviously it is called the simple random sampling without replacement. Now what is simple random sampling with replacement? Okay, you have this different combination. That is 1, 1, 1, 2, all the, all, all possible combination. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 3 on 3 to 3, 3, 3, 4, 4 on 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4. So now it is called the, why it is called the independent? Independent means that, suppose uh, uh, you have an coin, you have an unbiased coin, okay? Now uh, you are just tossing a coin. In the first time you are going to get the head. In the second time you are going to get the tail. Now this experiment has done 10 times. So now this, uh, Probability of getting hit does does not does not necessarily will have any impact of probability of getting hit till so that's why these two events are called the independent. Okay, the term is called the independent and identically distributed. What is the meaning of the independent? Now you have an unbiased coin. You are going to toss the coin ten, ten times. In the five times you are going to get hit. In the five times you are going to get ten. Now the probability of the getting head does not necessarily have any effect on this probability of getting tail. So that's why the two events are called independent. Now identically distributed. Suppose you do not want to change the distribution of the data. Okay? You don't want to change the distribution of the data. It selects the value and put it back. So that's why it is called the identically distributed. Means whatever this distribution is there, then you are going to interact it. So, so but that's why it is called this. You do not want to change the distribution of the data throughout the experiment. So that's why it is called the identically di di distributed. And independent means no impact that occurred in the second trial. So in the first trial, you are going to get head. In the second trial, you are going to head, have the tail. Now the probability of getting head in the first trial will not have any, any impact that this probability of getting tail in the second trial. So that's why this is called this independent. Now uh, the density function that we have already seen, what is the meaning of the probability density function? That uh, let a, fx is a function and x is a point in the real space. It's said to be, a, fx is said to be a probability density function where x is a point in, in R if it satisfies these two property. fx is greater than zero for all x is an element of R and fx ds is equal to 1, minus infinity to plus infinity. Now it is a triangular distribution. So in the triangular 
distribution you know fx is greater than is equal to 0 and also the area under the curve is how raising to height you can easily compute is also one okay similarly for this uh, uh, exponent exponential distribution that you have e to the power minus x and this e density function is exponential then you have also theta e e to the power minus x and if you fit a density function uh, we get uh, this is the uh, p a is equal to uh, a means area under the curve fx is so now uh, the questions come uh, to you that there is an important concept in the probability and statistics is called the fitting a distributions. Fitting a distribution, that is a very interesting concept, it's called the fitting a distribution. So how do you do it? That I'll explain. Okay, now next is called the normal distribution. So now this is very popular and common distribution that people are using, this is called the normal distribution. And this uh, x, x is a random variable, that is capital N. So now capital N means normal. Okay, capital N is called this normal, that is mu comma sigma square, where x follows the mu, mu nu and the co covariance sigma square. Now its probability density function is given by fx is equal to 1 by root over 2 pi into 1 by sigma exp of minus half x minus mu by sigma whole square, where x range is minus infinity to plus infinity, mu is minus infinity to plus infinity, sigma is greater than here. Where x is a variable, then uh, mu and f have the fixed values. Okay, so you can follow the very good book is called C R Rao. Uh, it is for the linear statistical inference and its applications where you can get all the details of the statistics. Now uh, this is called the bivariate normal distribution. In the bivariate normal uh, uh, distribution, you have mean uh, is equal to e x minus infinity to plus infinity x f x d x. It is for the continuous domain. And if it is a discrete domain, you have x i into p i. Now, if we just simply put these values of p i, small p i means density function. So please remember, so whenever I will be using the term is small p i, it is called the de density function. Now, if this is a capital P, it is means prior probability. Okay, you just put it. Now, mu is equal to x f x, sigma square is equal to x minus mu square and f x base. And the, there is another book is called the Gun Gupta, Das Gupta. Uh, there is a fundamental of uh, the statistics so you can follow. So I am not going to have the proof. So a uh, proof is there. So how do you do, do this proof? Let x minus mu by sigma is equal to y. You, you take the differentiation with respect to y and put it. And this proof is there, already there in this book. And the uh, it is an odd function that in the odd function you cannot have the integration. Uh, I mean, the integration is zero. Then the, from the mu x, e of a, expectation of x is equal to <coughs> it means that that uh, the population mean is equal to the sample mean expectation of x is equal to mean i mean estimated values is equal to the actual value so now uh, now the variance is equal to e x minus e x whole square now you just plug in the formula x minus that is sigma square simply okay now main concept that is start from this multivariate gaussian distribution that is very, very interesting concept because in the next class, I will be starting this base decision rule. Now, in the base decision rule, that you will see that class condition or probability density function. Now, the density function for Gaussian distribution and this Gaussian distribution will be this multivariate Gaussian distribution. You may have the single variate, you may have the bivariate, but I will be explaining to you with an example with this multivariate Gaussian distributions where the formula is x is n of mu where mu is a vector it is a column vector and sigma capital sigma it is a covariance matrix why why covariance matrix because you have the multivariate means you have more than two variables that's why it is called the multivariate okay then you will have to have this n c2 combination of these variables. So that's why you need to consider with this covariance matrix. Now the formula is 1 by root, root over 2 pi to the power n, sigma to the power half, exp minus half, x minus mu, x, x is a column vector, mu is, is also a column vector, x minus mu prime, or you can say the transpose, determinant, then uh, sigma inverse, x minus mu. Okay. 
Now, as you can see, in the, uh, the, the, the formula of the density function, now the properties of the density function is fx greater than is equal to 0 and integration minus, uh, minus infinity to plus infinity uh, fx ds is equal to 1. So now, how it is coming? Determinant of sigma. Sir, yes. Sir, actually, actually sir, it is sir, too it hot is too for us to grab grasp what you are seeing. I mean, we cannot see anything. Yes, sir. No VBD is visible from last 10 minutes, I think. So for me, more than 10 minutes, I can't see any VBD. It is not so visible. It's been 20 minutes, actually. Yes, sir. So, actually, it would be helpful if you write something on board or something. Because... It is visible. Yes, sir. If you can use some blackboard kind of thing, I think that will be better okay. for us to understand. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so another class. Okay, so our next class, so I'll be just deriving all these things in blackboard. Okay, uh, so that it will be. Uh, uh, I mean. Also, more. also, sir, if you can provide some solved examples for this mathematical part, like uh, covariance matrix and all. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Some uh, examples. Obviously, so uh, uh, firstly, I need to just complete the concept. Then only I can give it to the example. Okay. Because okay, uh, this, uh, anyway, I'll be, uh, I'll be just sharing this PPT to all of you. So don't be uh, bothered about it. Okay. So I'll just sharing this PPT to all of you. Okay. But uh, if you do not just uh, see these slides, na, so you, you should have stopped me. You should have stopped me just said this slide is not changing now because all these things that I have already explained to you. So the examples are there uh, in, in the PPT itself. So the example that I was taking one, two, three, four, there, this is an average, so it was there. So uh, can you see the slides now? No, sir. So we oh. are at slide uh, where the formula of mean covariance and co correlation coefficient is there. Okay, so you are not able to see the slides from the uh, correlation coefficient. Yes, sir. It is happening to I mean, all of you or some few students? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, also. Yes, sir. Now the slides are changing. Can you able to see this? Thing? No, sir. It's still no, stuck no. on the same slide. No, sir. Oh, oh. I don't know why because so there is some problem with the network connectivity or not. Anyway. Uh, so uh, in the tomorrow cell, I'll just, uh, I mean, just change this camera to the uh, uh, board blackboard. Okay. Uh, then, then I'll just solve it. Okay. And sir, sir, can you please share the contact number so we can uh, uh, resolve our uh, doubts? Yes, uh, you can just tell me that uh, because slide is not changing now. Uh, so I'll, uh, so I can just uh, tell you. So I'm just uh, typing here my contact number. Eh? Can you receive? Uh, have you received it? So we can't see anything. No, sir. So you send your contact number on MST? Yes. Okay. Wait. So now you can tell we will write. You write on chat box. Uh, I don't know. Something. Some problem is there. So that's why. So it is still showing it isn't sending. Okay. So uh, you can you can write it down. It's six three seven double zero. Yes, sir. Six three seven double zero six six nine eight one. Okay, sir. Okay. So uh, you please just uh, drop me a uh, message or. Uh, uh, just call me so if this site is not changing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll meet tomorrow. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Uh.